Okay, let's uh, continue talking about uh, root finding methods. And our next uh, root finding methods are newton raphson and the secant method. So newton raphson is um, uses uh, basically the derivative um, and the uses a tangent line to find the best linear approximation to the function and uses that to help us find the roots. So um, one of the drawbacks of fixed point iteration is that it is uh, slow um, and so newton raphson is, uh, is much faster, okay? And it's probably one of the uh, most popular uh, root finding methods just because of uh, its performance. So let's say we have uh, some value a and that is a root of our function f and what we need is we need f to be differentiable so we need f to have a continuous derivative uh, f prime and um, and then we're gonna start off with some initial guess we, we'll call this x at time zero x zero that's gonna be kind of our guess that we're hoping is kind of close to the root and therefore the kind of best linear approximation of f, f, f of x that uh, close to th this value x zero is the equation of the tangent line. That is, uh, we're going to do, uh, so in kind of point slope form, uh, we're going to have the point uh, run through the point f of x zero plus f prime at x zero, that is the slope times x minus x zero, okay? And, and the reason why this works is because basically if you think about the Taylor series expansion of f of x around that point x zero, then you know it's basically f of x zero plus f you know the first derivative uh, at x zero and then the second derivative uh, at x zero so on and so forth and that continues to expand um, and uh, and basically we're just throwing away everything that's a higher order term okay and so that that gives us our kind of our linear approximation there okay and so this tangent line is uh, a good approximation to f near x0 and then our next guess that we're going to use in this iterative algorithm is going to be the point where the tangent line crosses the x-axis. Um, oh, so here is, so this illustration got uh, a little bit cut off uh, I guess because I've got some deprecated warnings here but basically um, here's the function. The function is x squared minus 3 Okay, and I have the vertical axis just scaled uh, way different. And here my initial starting point is at 10. So I have uh, x squared minus 3, and it goes all the way up. So at 10, it has a value of 97. And then uh, we insert, um, we start off at, at x0 is equal to 10. And then I plug it in, okay? And then when I plug in uh, 10 here, then I, I find the tangent line and I follow this tangent line all the way down and the location where this tangent line crosses the uh, the x-axis is right here at 5.15 and then so I plug that in okay and I take that up and I say okay well what is the value of the function when I plug in 5.15 it's right here at the blue line and then I say okay what is the tangent line there and the tangent line is this red dotted line and I follow the red dotted line down to the x-axis that gives me this next location, 2 point something, 2.866. I plug that in, okay, and I say, okay, what is the value of the function? It's right up here. And then I say, okay, what's the tangent line at that location? It's this red dotted line, and it takes me down to here. And so you can see if I kind of follow this over and over and over again, we're going to get a value um, uh, pretty close to uh, where, so I mean, at this point, it's the, the function is you know close to being linear here. Uh, if you zoom in, it's not exactly linear, but it's uh, pretty close to it. And so this is going to get us very close to where the root is, where the function crosses crosses the line. Okay. So how do we know where the tangent line crosses the x-axis? Okay. Well, here we have a triangle, right? We have a triangle, and um, and basically, um, I know the height of this side, the right. So I'm going to I'm going to call this thing the triangle and we have three sides. We have the rise, we have the run, which is the length, the horizontal length of the triangle, and then we have the hypotenuse. And the slope, the slope of um, this uh, this hypotenuse here, okay, the slope here, uh, we 
we say is the rise, the vertical part, divided by the run, the horizontal, horizontal length. And so here, um, we know the value of the rise because I just plug in uh, f of x0, and that gives me 97, right? I plug in x0, 10, 10 squared minus 3 gives me 9, 97. So the, side of the, the length of this side of the triangle is 97. Okay, how long is this length over here? Okay, well, just with a little bit of algebra, um, the run, the horizontal length, is going to be equal to the rise, that is 97, divided by the value of the slope. Okay, I know that at this point, okay, the slope, I just take the derivative of this and I get 2x, okay, the, the slope at um, x0 is going to be 20. Okay, so therefore this length is going to be uh, 97 divided by 20. That gives me a length of 4.85. So therefore this location right here is going to be 10 minus 4.85 because the, the slope is you know, derivative of x squared minus 3 is going to be 2x. I plug in 10, I get a uh, slope of 20. And so if my slope is 97 divided by the run, you know, I can figure out the run is 97 divided by 20, and that's going to be 4.85. Okay, so 10 minus 4.85 gives me 5.15. And so that's, that's how we figure out uh, what, what to use for our next iteration. And so to kind of uh, generalize this, we say at the next location, x at time 1 is going to be our current location, x at time 0, minus, and this part is basically the rise, f at x0, divided by the slope, which is f prime at x0. And so that's going to be um, how we find the next iteration. And then to generalize, we just say, OK, well, the value at time n plus 1 uh, is going to be x at our current location, xn minus f of xn divided by the slope f prime uh, at xn. And, uh, and so this is the newton raphson method right here. OK. Um, and so uh, the newton raphson method uh, works like this. We start at some initial value x0, and then we just repeat this. We find, keep finding our next uh, value like this. And then when this value of f of xn, because we, we calculate this, when this is close enough to 0, Right, when well, this is close enough to zero, and so we might say my tolerance is ten to the minus six or whatever. When that's close enough to zero, then we'll say, all right, that's close enough for us to say we found a root. We found a root. Okay, so let's try this out on our uh, function that we saw earlier. Our function is log of x minus e to the negative x. Okay, and so in order for this to work, we got to figure out our derivative. So the derivative of this, with respect to x, log of x is going to give me one over x. And then I got e to the negative x. The derivative of that is e to the negative x time with chain rule, negative times that. So then we're going to get 1 over x plus e to the negative x. That's going to be the derivative of f of x. OK, so now I'll just start off at some uh, arbitrary location. We'll start off at x equal to 2. I input those, those functions uh, into r. So I'm going to say f is log of x minus e to the negative x. And then f prime, the derivative, is going to be 1 over x plus e to the negative x. And, um, and so I have these two functions. And so I'm going to do, I'm going to just start off uh, arbitrary location, x equal to 2. Um, and I'm going to just say, hey, while the uh, f of x, OK, absolute value of f of x is greater than some tolerance, while it's greater than 10 to the minus 8, we'll keep going, right? And then what we'll do is we'll say, OK, the next value, x, the next value x is going to be our current location minus f at our current location divided by f prime at our current location. And once I figure that out, I'm going to say, hey, that's going to be the next value. And then our, our thing will uh, iterate, right? I just add 1 to my iteration so I can count how many iterations it took. I mean, this is an optional step, but we'll put that in there just so we can see. And when we're done, uh, it gives me the same value that I had before, 1.3098. I plug that in. I say, hey, did that uh, give me something close to 0? Yeah, sure. It gave me uh, 3.49 times 10 to the minus 9. So a value close to 0, that's less than my tolerance. So I'm, I'm happy with this value, 1.3098. And you know what? It only took me four iterations to reach this value, right? So the newton raphson method, it converges really quickly. Only four iterations. We got, the, uh, we got something that approximate or approximates a root. OK? All right. Uh, if you assume that newton raphson method converges, okay, that is that x at time n eventually reaches a uh, as uh, n goes to infinity, 
um, given that f is differentiable and f prime is continuous, then we can show that, uh, that the location that it converges to is, uh, is indeed a root, okay? So we can say, you know, um, let's take this as n goes to infinity, and we plug all of this in, okay? And this is basically going to just say, hey, you know what? Um, uh, so we're saying, you know, at the, the next, at, um, you know, our current location limit is this. So by definition, under our assumption, I guess, if we're assuming that xn goes to a, this will go to a. And then if we assume that this, um, again, as n goes to infinity, that these go to a, then that's, uh, that's what we get. And, we, and this is kind of basically going to say, yeah, you know what? This is, uh, is going to converge to to our root, right? So assuming that um, uh, f, uh, f prime <laughs> isn't uh, plus or minus infinity or something like that, and uh, f of a, that is a is indeed a root, we're going to see that this is uh, a is equal to a minus base. This part's going to be 0, OK? Uh, is going to be 0. OK, so. Uh, if the newton raphson method does converge and the derivative of a is finite, then indeed it converges to a root, okay? Does it always converge, though? And the answer is no. It does not always converge, okay? Uh, we can say that if f is well-behaved, that is, um, it, uh, <laughs> you know, doesn't, um, uh, you know, that it can be approximated by a linear function, uh, you know, around a... Uh, around the uh, the root okay then um, and you start with a value x0 that's close enough to a then yes it will converge okay um, and you know kind of mathematically you can show that the newton raphson method converges quadratically that is uh, the number of kind of decimal places of precision doubles each iteration okay um, but um, if quadratic conversion isn't satisfied uh, then the newton raphson method isn't guaranteed to converge as quickly, may not even, is not guaranteed to converge at all. And so um, there's going to be uh, a couple examples in your homework where newton raphson method does not converge. Um, it was these, these examples have been kind of uh, hand-picked for you so you can see them. But uh, uh, some reasons why uh, it will fail to converge, okay, is that if the derivative, okay, is equal to zero, okay? Not that, so the derivative can equal zero in general, but if it happens to be one of the locations that you check at one of the, the ends, right? At, at one of the times that you check, if the derivative happens to equal zero, then the next tangent line will be parallel to the x-axis and, and you won't be able to get the next, um, you won't be able to get the next location, right? Um, sometimes you have a derivative that isn't zero, but is just kind of close to zero, right? So, um, you know, for whatever reason, you know, as you follow the algorithm, it takes you to a location that ends up having a derivative close to zero. And so now you don't, you know, um, the tangent line, you know, crosses the x-axis at, say, like... <laughs> Uh, 100 points away from you currently are, okay? And that could really throw things off, right? So the derivative f prime is allowed to equal 0 at certain locations, but it can't be 0 at any of the kind of locations that just that it iterates through, okay? Convergence also depends on the uh, initial guess or the, your starting value. If your starting value uh, is too far away from the root, it might not converge. Or uh, your function might have multiple roots, and it could end up converging to a different root, okay? Um, sometimes the newton raphson method ends up kind of like oscillating back and forth if you have like just some kind of interesting function and it doesn't converge, okay? Um, and if you have a second derivative that's I infinite or undefined, it could also cause different problems. Um, we have a few examples so here. Let me just pull up this site okay so so this is kind of like a well-behaved example it starts off and it kind of follows and there it goes to the uh, the root right there okay um, okay so here's one where we run into some problems okay so here's a location um, it's not a root here I don't know if can I zoom in okay so this is not a root but you can see right around here the derivative is zero here and close to it it's 
close to zero or you know you know very small numbers. So watch what happens. Okay, so it ends up over here, and and so and uh, when you follow, take the tangent line at this location, it ends up over here, and then it ends up over here, and then the tangent line at this location kind of points in the opposite direction, and so um, we end up kind of just. It keeps kind of bouncing around, uh, and it and it it's having trouble. Finally, it kind of kicks it out all the way over here, and when it kicks it out over here, then it's able to kind of converge to this root right here. But it takes a little while because uh, because of the shape of this function right around here, uh, it ends up kind of oscillating back and forth, and so that could happen with uh, Newton Rapson because it's just going off of tangent lines. It doesn't know any better, okay? Uh, I think this one, this one behaves just fine, okay? Um, but, uh, but you might think like, okay, so so the root is way over here at ten, and there's also a root over here at zero, right? And you might think, well, if I started off at two, I should end up kind of at the closer root, but then that's not the case at all, right? It just goes off a of tangent line, so it, it ends up taking taking you all the way out to say uh, out out here at 10 and you would uh, in order to kind of converge to the root at 0 you would need to have probably started off at a value less than um, positive 1 okay um, here's one where uh, it doesn't converge at all so let me just restart this this value so starting here just with the shape of this function uh, when we take the tangent line it spits it out farther away, way over here when we take the tangent line here, it spits it out over here, okay, and then it just kind of, it just diverges, and so the current location just kind of bounces uh, all over the place, and uh, and it, it's it's off the, uh, it's off the uh, kind of, off the chart here. We can't see where it's going, but um, but yeah, this this is what happens. This is the arc tangent function. So not not all that weird of a function, but um, but this is one where. Um, Newton wraps and just just can't do it. Okay, so those are just some examples of where uh, the Newton's method just can't converge. Okay, or has has struggles uh, converging. Okay, uh, there's another method, secant method. Okay, so um, Newton wraps and people uh, people actually really like it because it when it does converge, its performance is really good. Okay, and so um, so we like that, but one of the downsides of newton rapson is that we need to know the derivative of the function, okay? And sometimes, sometimes we don't know the derivative, okay? Or we can't figure out how to calculate de the derivative. And in that case, um, uh, an alternative method is the secant method, okay? Secant method is kind of like newton rapson You're getting something that looks kind of like a tangent line, but it's not a tangent line. It's the secant line, okay? And um, and we're based, you know, getting some kind of linear approximation to the function, and so the idea here is that rather than getting the tangent line, you start off with two initial guesses, an x zero and an x one, and then you connect connect those things that forms your secant line, and then you just kind of extend that secant line until it crosses the x axis. Okay, so. So you start off at x0, and you calculate the value of the function at x0. And then you have another starting guess, x1, and you calculate the value of the function at x1. And then you join those lines with the secant line and continue that until the x-axis. So here, I've got my function x squared minus 3. I'm going to start off with location 10. Uh, x0 is 10, uh, and I guess this would be 97. And then uh, x x1 is going to be 8. 8 squared minus 3 gives me 61. And so here I have a I have a dot at 10 comma 97 and 8 comma 61. I join those with a straight line and I trace that straight line all the way down and that takes me to I don't know whatever this location is, okay? And then um, and now that I have that location, okay, I plug that in. Um, I don't know what this is, something around 4-ish, okay? And uh, I plug that into the function, and then now I have, I'm going to use um, 8, okay? 
x1 was 8. My next value I'm just going to say is 4 or whatever. And I connect those lines, okay? And I trace that down until we get to here. And then um, and so I say, okay, uh, here it crosses the x-axis right here. Uh, we'll trace that up to the, uh, the function. And, uh, and so now I have a tangent, a secant line. Sorry, not a tangent line. Secant line connecting from here to here. We trace that down to the x-axis, and that takes me to here. And, uh, and we go there, okay? So this uh, kind of, just kind of looking at this, how do, uh, where do we end up here, okay? So I plug in uh, my first value. I plug in 10, and I get 97. My next value is 8, and I get 61, okay? So what is my slope? My slope is the change in y divided by the change in x, okay? The change in x was 2, okay? The change in the uh, y, okay, 97 minus 61, that's a difference of 36, right? So 36 divided by 2, my slope is 18, okay? So the line passes through the point, 8 comma 61, and then uh, my slope is 18. So I can say, all right, um, you know, in point slope form, I have y minus 61 is equal to the slope 18 times x minus 8, okay? And, um, and so, uh, kind of solving for that, uh, the next value I get is going to be 4.611 when I plug all of that in, okay? So solving for where is this uh, equation, this linear equation, equal to 0, okay? Um, so I get 0 minus 61 is 18 times x minus 8. We solve for that, we get x is 4.611. So that's going to be the next value of x, okay? And then I just kind of repeat that. And I say, okay, well, here's 4.611. This value is 8. And then we calculate the slope. And then we calculate the point. All right. So to generalize this, we say the slope of that secant line, okay, is we're going to say, well, how different is x0 from x1? And how different was f of x0 from f of x1? So we say the change in y is this divided by the change in x is this, okay? And then you have point slope form for the equation of a line which is y minus, uh, you know, uh, for if you're going to plug in x1, y minus f of x1 is equal to the slope times x minus x1. And so um, I can replace at m with the, uh, the value of the slope, and so I get this. And now um, I want to solve for where this thing um, is, uh, is equal to, uh, to 0, okay? So we're going to say, all right, um, we'll plug in. 0, so we want to choose uh, x2, so that y is equal to 0, right? So uh, so we do that, and then so solving for where is uh, x, x2, okay, for where, where this is, and we're going to solve for x2. I plug in 0 for this, and then just kind of working uh, through algebra, we're going to say, okay, uh, the value of x2, so that this thing is uh, y equals 0, is going to be this, right? And so this is how we get our next... Um, our next value. So this is, um, you know, our current location, x1 minus f of x1 divided by uh, basically the, the slope of the line, okay? And so that's, uh, so that's how we have it, okay? So we have um, x at the next iteration, x at time n plus 1 is x at our current location minus f of x at our current location and then divided by, or basically uh, the it, multiplied by the reciprocal of the slope of the secant line, okay? And so, you know, if you think about it, the, the slope of the tangent line can be approximated uh, by this, and basically we're being, doing f of x divided by f prime of xn, and so the secant, the secant method is kind of like an approximation to the Newton-Raphson method, okay? But basically you're calculating your slope by doing a finite difference. So here's the uh, secant method uh, as an algorithm. And again, you just kind of keep going until uh, you reach some kind of uh, limit where you say f at uh, x at time n is, uh, is less than you know, some tolerance. And then that's when you'll stop. OK. Um, this convergence properties of the secant method are similar to those of the Newton-Raphson method. Um, so if the function is well behaved and you start off with kind of decent values of x0 and x, x1, then it will converge quickly, okay, but not as fast as Newton-Raphson method. But again, um, Newton-Raphson method is not guaranteed to converge, and neither is secant, secant method. Secant method 
is uh, not guaranteed to converge. All right. The trade-offs between newton raphson and secant method is that uh, newton raphson you got to figure out the derivative, and secant method, you don't have to figure out the derivative. But secant method converges a little bit slower, and you need two initial points. Um, but it's a, it, it's a method, and it, it works in a lot of cases. Um, OK, um, we will end uh, this video here.